Good day, Orange County. I am so excited to introduce you to the CEO and founder of Aegis Living, Dwayne Clark. Dwayne, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me on today. Oh, thank you so much. I know that you are you taking time out at your, from your ranch and with your grandkids, and it means a lot that you would come and talk with us today about how we can help stay healthy and be healthy. Well, it's kind of a good respite for me. When you have nine grandchildren, I need a time out. So it's good. <laughs> so you periodically give yourself a time out. Great time out. Have a fictitious meeting. I can't be disturbed now. So <laughs> big sign on the door, do not disturb, but you might be in there for a couple hours, right? <laughs> they call me Poppy and they're like, why is Poppy always in these meetings? So <laughs> Oh, I love it. That is too fun. Well, Dwayne, you have such an interesting story. Could you just start off and tell us a little bit about how you got started? Yeah, I've been in senior housing for about 35 years. Um, I, I had a very unusual background coming out of college. I thought I wanted to be a criminal defense attorney. So I worked in the criminal justice system for a while. I worked in the prison system in probation and parole and, you know, had no idea 35 years ago I was going to get into senior housing. And my my sister was on a, a government agency, the aging services uh, entity, and she said, this is in 1985, she said, go down and read this study called The Grain of America. And, you know, this is before computers, so you'd have to go to the library, right? Mm -hmm. So I go down to the library, and this is a voluminous study that I get through, and I'm like, oh, my God, everybody's going to be, you know, there's going to be so many elderly here in the next 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. And um, she set up an interview with this company, with a company called Leisure Care, phenomenal company. I spent my first seven years there, um, got recruited away by a company called Sunrise, which became the largest senior housing company in the, in the world. I was the number two guy there. And then in 1997, decided I wanted to strike out on my own and founded Aegis Living, uh, primarily because, first of all, everybody wants to be in charge, right? So I wanted to be in charge. And I wanted to do things very different than most senior housing companies. I wanted to tap into kind of modern cultures and not think of our senior housing as senior housing. I wanted to think of them as, you know, you would a nice hotel or, you know, so we were the first people to put spas into senior housing, you know, teach things like healing touch, mm. you know, Reiki, those kinds of things. And, you know, that was 23 and a half years ago. And here we are today. Well, I, I know we were talking about this before, but um, my background is in skilled nursing. And we have heard of, about you as, as a competitor, as a fierce competitor to emulate for many years. So it's it's really fun to meet the, the man who really started this kind of med spa idea with the senior housing. And um, it's amazing to see your influence, not only in your own buildings, but throughout the community. So kudos to you on that, really making big cultural industry shifts yourself. That's so exciting. So, uh, so tell us what's, what, what do you, what are you seeing in your facilities right now in terms of like, how is it going with COVID? How is, how is the, um, overall atmosphere? Well, obviously it's a, it's a scary time and it's scary on a variety of different levels. And, Keep in mind, our, we're headquartered in Seattle. We have several buildings in California, about half the companies in California, one building in Nevada. We got COVID very, very early. We got our first COVID case. If you remember, COVID broke out in a nursing home in Kirkland, Washington. Well, we have two buildings within five minutes of that nursing home. Mm -hmm. And corporate office is probably seven minutes from that nursing home. So the interaction between uh, that that place that had, I don't even know how many cases, probably close to 100, and our staff was very, very close. So we ended up um, we ended up having our first case February 28th before anyone knew what COVID was, right? Just, just to give you a historical perspective, February 28th was the first death in the United States from COVID. Mm -hmm. So this is before anyone wore a mask you'd have to send a test off to the CDC in Georgia. It took eight to 12 days to get the results back. Mm -hmm. So we didn't find out that we had COVID in our building until March 8th. Mm -hmm. We immediately, being the thought leaders that we are, the company were very progressive, went into lockdown. We locked down ourselves, um, the company, before any government intervention or anything else. We did a massive surplus of PPE, um, and you know, 
I'm, I'm proud to report today that we, we, between our staff and residents and contract employees, we have about a little over 5,000 people. We, none of our residents have it, not one of our residents. Oh, that's so, incredible. Yeah, yeah. So, and, you know, there's a lot of tips that I can give about how that's happened because, you know, we were, one of the things that we did early, early on is we enacted the relationships we have with the scientific community. You know, in Seattle, we have the Gates Foundation. We have the Institute for Disease Modeling that's providing the White House with all the data. We have the uh, Fred Hutch Society who dealt with SARS and Ebola and uh, AIDS and various cancers. We have um, University of Washington who has a very progressive, progressive infectious disease program. But we reached out to our network in California and, and even the University of Minnesota and so on and we formed a virus council hmm. and made up of a doctor who's on the cutting edge of development of vaccine, geriatricians, a psychologist, um, a, um, a doctor at the Fred Hutch who's on the front lines for looking at combating um, the disease and how to prevent it. He's written up in the New York Times probably once a month. So we have seven people. Uh, on this seven doctors on this virus council and they have led us in this process and and so you know we have been very progressive in, in fighting this disease since the onset um, and found some of the secrets or tricks to it and you know a lot of it I, I heard a professor talking about you know what's the best way to prevent getting from yourself getting COVID and he says it's kind of like Swiss cheese if you hold up one piece of Swiss cheese one slice there's a lot of holes in it, right? Well, that's kind of like wearing a mask, right? Mm -hmm. And then you put another layer of Swiss cheese over it. Well, that's like wearing a mask and washing your hands. And then you mm -hmm. put a third layer. Well, that's like wearing a mask, washing your hands and social distancing. Mm -hmm. And then, and so the more layers that you put on, the more the holes fill up, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'll give you a great example of that. One of the things that we did, um, it's almost three months now, two and a half, three months ago, is we've always had lots of PPE. In fact, today we have about seven months supply of PPE. Wow. And that is a critically important issue. Yes. Why it's a critically important issue is not only for the, the daily protection of your staff, but it's the certainty that you can provide staff that you're going to be safe, right? Mm -hmm. And what is plaguing uh, a lot of senior housing communities uncertainty right now. But one of the things we did two and a half months ago is in addition to masks, we started to wear shields. Mm -hmm. So we had about probably when we started to wear the shields, we probably had about 30, 30 cases out of the 5,000 people in the company. Since then, we've gone to zero resident cases since we started wearing the mask and the shield. Wow, that's amazing to see. Like you've actually got empirical data showing the, I mean, yeah. that that is that is really what we need to broadcast, you know, far and wide to show that this stuff works. And this yeah. you had the opportunity to share that within your community and others. Yeah. yeah well, we, I, I do probably two to three webinars a month for the industry, for the trade associations, for AARP and those kinds of things. So we've been sharing it quite broadly. And, um, you know, that's, now, whether people believe it, whether they decide to do it, whether they want to bear the cost, you know, that's on them. But we, we think that's uh, that's fundamental in preventing the spread of this disease. That's amazing to know. And I know that you really take so much pride in in teaming up with your your employees, that it's not it's not just you who has to come up with this. So you're constantly looking for new ways to bring in bigger and better ideas. So congratulations on, on this one for sure. Well, our employees are essential. You know, I mean, since day one of finding the company, we, I mean, one of the founding principles of, of the company was to have a pro-employee culture, right? And we've been voted best company to work for, I think now 14 times. We're the only healthcare company in the history of Glassdoor to make a top 50 company in Glassdoor. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we wanted, you know, when we first got this outbreak, the end of February, 1st of March, we took the whole leadership team and we we compartmentalized them. We said, okay, you're going to be you're going to work on the comm center. You're going to work in the PPE center. You're going to work on infectious control. You're going to work on scientific data. You're going to work on technology. So we divided all these people strategically, and one of the one of the committees was our employees, right? Because all of a sudden our employees were homeschooling. 
we feared that, you know, if they go to the grocery store, they'd get COVID. We didn't want them to go to an ER if they were sick because they would get COVID. So we, we started providing them food. They could buy food right at our community. Um, we immediately put them on, <clears throat> excuse me, we put them on a telehealth program called 98.6 for the whole family. So if you got sick or symptoms, right, ever you could click on to your, you know, iPad or iPhone and immediately get, um, you know, a physician on the line, not having to go to the emergency room. And of mm -hmm. course, I mean, if, if you get violently ill or very sick, that doctor would say, okay, it's time to go to the emergency room. So again, it, it goes back to certainty. I, I met with uh, the head of talent and culture at Microsoft here a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things that they did is that they have a big neuroscience department where they're, they're tracking outcomes. And they said that giving people certainty was more powerful to the brain than giving people positive news. Now that's that's pretty startling. You know, they have 195,000 employees, but telling people, hey, you're gonna have a job, we're gonna take care of you, you're gonna have medical benefits, there's not gonna be any layoffs, you're gonna be safe. You know, that certainty was more reassuring to the brain than positive news. That's, that that's is really amazing. interesting. Yeah. Wow. That I'd, is like, I'd love for people to be able to find out um, other parts of you. You've also written a book. Can you tell us five, about your book? Five. But my latest one's called 30 Summers More. Um, 30 Summers More started out being a, um, it really started out being a chronicle of the 60,000 people that I've overseen the care of. And um, in probably within the first six months of writing this book, I ended up in the hospital and, you know, I've always been a hard charging, you know, CEO that's, you know, burns the midnight oil and, and, you know, loves life and so on. And ended up in this hospital with this gastro bleed where they're about two seconds away from giving me a blood transfer and doing surgery on me. And uh, I told my wife, I, you know, I've never been, I've been in a hospital like one day in my life. And so I told my wife, she said, bring in my script. I want to work on it. And so she brought in my script because I was just bored to tears. And uh, as I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, my God, this book is not about the 60,000 people that I've cared for. This book is about 40-year-old, 50-year-old, 60-year-old, 70-year-old people that probably are so you know, involved in life, taking care of other things and other people that they're not focusing on themselves. And that started a mission for me where uh, I became obsessed with finding out about the best practices of living, not only a long life, but a good quality life. So if you give up purpose, you give up life. And you know, I think retirement should be X'd out of the American communication system. I think you're absolutely right. I look at my dad who worked full time on his feet 10 hours a day until he was 84. Mm -hmm. And he only retired because we forced him to. <laughs> he had yeah. a health yeah. incident and it was time. It was just time to move on. But then he t now he's like my, my brother's right hand. He's his project manager. Busy yeah. every day, must have something to do. Mm -hmm. He's the living example of what you're talking about. Well, How old he's, is he? he's 88 now. Oh, God bless him. That's yeah. great. And going strong, works out four days a week does everything so he's really a model a model citizen for a long life we're we're grateful yeah thank you, thank you so much for sharing with us how can we how can we find you you can go on uh Dwayne j clark on um on my website dwaynejclark.com um i'm on instagram under the same thing so you know i'm, I'm pretty easy to find Okay. Well, our That's viewers wonderful. will be looking for more. This I is I can't wait to read the book. This was just mind-blowing to me. I feel well, like thanks. Yeah, thank you so much for your insights. Oh, my pleasure. There's lots of tips in there on things like sleep, you know, I don't use the word exercise. I use the word movement because I think exercise has a negative connotation, but movement is what we should be doing. Mm, amazing. Thank you for taking the time away from your family. Thank you for Oh, my pleasure. With us. And, and you don't have to take the sign down off the door. Poppy can still be in his meeting. <laughs> right. We'll look forward to seeing you again. All right. Bye. -bye. 
Named 2019's Best Health Book by Indie Books, 30 Summers More is a must-have for anyone looking to live longer and stronger. Visit www.dwaynejclark.com to get your hardcover copy of 30 Summers More, plus instant download access to a free 10-point personal health assessment and 36 micro habits for living your best life guide.